Imagine that you are designing a backend for an e-commerce website like Amazon. The number of clients will be very large. This means massive amounts of data to be processed and this data will rise exponentially every year. Now, can we store and manage this amount of data on a single server? The answer is obviously no. So, we'll have to spin up more machines and distribute the load across the servers. First, we'll have to come up with a strategy to distribute the data evenly among the nodes. Second, we'll have to find a way to retrieve data efficiently from the cluster. This means that we have to know on which server a piece of data resides because otherwise we'll have to search on each node. The traditional way to solve these problems is through the modulus operator. Given a bunch of keys, we apply a function that will determine on which bucket or server a key should go. When a request comes in, we assign it a request ID or a key. For simplicity, let's say key 1 is Bob. Then we calculate its hash. Shortly, a hash function can be used to map data of arbitrary size to values of fixed size. Afterwards, on this hash value, we apply modulus with the number of available nodes, in this case 3 nodes, and we find the remainder 1. This will determine on which server number the data will go. Finally, we forward the request to the specific node to process it. In the end, the distribution function looks like this. This method will tell us where the data will be stored. Furthermore, while retrieving the data, we'll use the same logic. We calculate the server number and then we fetch the data. This approach of calculating the modulus works well, but only when the number of servers is fixed. However, if we need to add or remove a server, then problems will arise. For instance, if the server 1 goes offline, the size of the server pool becomes 2. Using the same hash function, we get the same hash value for a key. But applying a modular operation gives us a different server index. This is because the number of servers were reduced by 1. So, in this case, the key 1 goes to node 0 instead of node 1 as before. Further, this problem will have an impact while retrieving the data for the existing keys. If server 1 goes offline, most clients will connect to the wrong servers to fetch the data. To retrieve data, we use the same hash algorithm to calculate on which server the data is stored. But this time, we get a different server than before because the total number of servers have changed. As a result, we end up with a burst of requests that are missing the right target server. Hence, we have to rehash all the existing keys and assign them to different servers. This is expensive for two reasons. First, we need to recalculate the server IDs for all the keys. Second, we need to move most of the keys to the other available nodes. In the worst case, we will need to move all the data in the system. This kind of operations can be very costly in terms of time and hardware resources. So, how can we add or remove nodes with minimal change in our infrastructure? A powerful technique to mitigate this problem is consistent hashing. Consistent hashing is an algorithm that solves our problems when we need to dynamically add or remove servers. Let's consider we stored 100 million keys and they were distributed across three servers. We see that in the case of simple hashing with modulo distribution, when we need to add or remove a server, all the keys stored in the system are impacted. On the other hand, when using consistent hashing, only a subset of the keys are affected. In this case, the number of impacted keys is the total number of keys, 100 millions, divided by the total number of servers, 4. As a result, we can scale up or down without impacting the overall system. How does consistent hashing accomplish this? First, it uses a conceptual hash ring. We'll understand later why this algorithm uses a ring. But now, let's consider we have a ring with a total number of hash values n. Then, the algorithm 
maps every server to a point on the circle. Here, we can use the IP address of the servers to determine their location points. We calculate the hash of the IP address and the result is a point on the circle. For node 1, a hash is calculated and its value, S1, is added to the ring. And we do the same for all the servers. You might observe that the node distribution is not really uniform across the ring, but we'll see later how to distribute them more evenly. Next, we do the same for the keys. Every key is hashed using the same hashing algorithm and assigned a point on the circle. Now, how do we determine which node is responsible for a certain key? We consider a key and, and we move in a clockwise direction until we find the nearest server. Thus, key 1 will be allocated on server 1, key 2 will be stored on server 3, and key 3 on server 1 as well. So, for the given set of keys, we end up with the following allocation of servers. Now, let's see what happens when we add a new node to the cluster. The expectation is that with this algorithm, only a fraction of the keys would need redistribution. As described previously, we first calculate the hash of the new server IP and we find its location on the circle. We see that it's located between S3 and S1 on the circle. After server number 4 is added, only key number 3 needs to be reallocated. The rest of the keys, key 1 and key 2, remain on the same servers. But why only key 3 should be reallocated? If we go clockwise on the ring from the key 3 position to the nearest server, we'll find server S4. It's not server 1 anymore. However, the other keys don't need redistribution based on the same algorithm. Similarly, when an existing server is removed, only the keys belonging to that server need to be reassigned. For instance, let's consider that node 3 is removed. We see that only key 2 requires reallocation. If we go in clockwise direction, we find first the server S4. So, unlike normal hashing, when we remove a server, we don't need to rehash all the keys. Still, basic consistent hashing is also not perfect. We'll see next what problem is still not treated. While using the consistent hashing algorithm, we might end up with irregular distribution of data. For instance, here, server S1 handles a larger chunk of data than the other servers. So, this server can become a bottleneck in a distributed system and it can reduce the performance of the system overall. There are two main issues that can lead to this problem. First, the space between adjacent servers is random and it can be very small or fairly large. This is especially true when servers are constantly added or removed. Second, the keys are also distributed on the ring in a non-uniform manner. For instance, here, most of the keys are stored on server 1, however, server 2 has no keys. Next, we'll see what technique can solve these problems. We'll make use of virtual nodes as an elegant solution to distribute the load more evenly across the nodes. Basically, in this method, instead of applying a single hash function for a node, we'll apply multiple hash functions onto the same node key. For instance, we can consider three hash functions instead of one. This means that each physical node will be represented by three virtual nodes on the ring. Instead of using S1, we have S1 first, S1 second, and S1 third to represent server 1 on the ring. Similarly, for server 2, we have the following virtual nodes on the ring. And so on. Now, for the keys, we continue to use only one hash function. Whenever the key lands onto the ring, it will be processed by the next virtual node found while moving in the clockwise direction. However, now, each server has three positions, so the load of the requests is more uniform. 
This can be observed in the following table as well. Moreover, if a certain node has more hardware capacity than others, we can add to it more virtual nodes by using additional hash functions. This way, it will have more positions on the ring and it will serve more requests. Of course, in real-world systems, the number of virtual nodes is much larger than 9. As the number of virtual nodes increases, the distribution of keys becomes more balanced. And if the number of virtual nodes would be equal to the number of keys, then we would have a perfect distribution. However, this is not really feasible and we don't actually need so many nodes for a good distribution. For example, with 100 virtual nodes, we might get a difference of 10% between the nodes when considering the number of store keys. However, with 200 nodes, we might get a deviation of only 5% for example. The deviation is also referred as standard deviation, sigma, and it shows how dispersed the data is in relation to the mean or average. In conclusion, when using consistent hashing, we can easily add or remove servers without affecting the whole system. Here, only a fraction of the keys need to be rearranged. This means that we can scale up or down more easily. Furthermore, using the virtual nodes technique, we can distribute the keys evenly across the cluster. This way, we avoid the problem of overloading certain servers.